it's the evening before the big event. We are on carb Christmas Eve, if you will, because tomorrow I'm gonna to be attempting to eat 1,000 grams of carbs whilst keeping my fats under 30 and still hitting my regular protein intake. Why? That's a good question. Basically, I wanna give my clients and people that ask online some tips, tricks, and ideas for eating high carb while still keeping fats low and hopefully as well, I'll give a lot of pointers to show people how to eat a lot of food with minimal food volume, which can especially come in handy when people are gaining. Obviously the 1000 grams of carbs is excessive, as is keeping fats under 30 grams, but you guys can enjoy watching me make an example of myself, and I'll just share a ton of tips throughout about getting a lot of food down pretty easily whilst you're bulking. Right, here we go. It is 4.45. If you are faced with a lot of calories, tip number one, start early, make the most of your day and spread those meals out. You don't want to be faced with a two and a half thousand calorie meal because you miss one earlier on. I'm shooting off to train legs, so I'm going to start the day with 35 grams of whey isolate. I'm going with banana lately. Then I'm going to do 120 grams of carbs from dates which is equivalent to 185 grams of actual dry weight. Okay, so why dates? Well, three reasons. Firstly, the volume of dried fruits is much lower for the amount of calories and carbs you can get. So you can see here that 120 grams is pretty easy to put away, whereas to get that amount of carbs from other fruits, that'd be like 10 punnets of raspberries. Secondly, they're gonna digest easily pre-workout. They're full of naturally occurring sugars. There's no fat, and so it won't sit in my stomach for ages. And thirdly, perhaps most interestingly, at least it is to me, dates are half glucose and half fructose. When we eat a lot of carbs in one serving, there's a limit to how many carbs can get into our muscles and then be oxidized for energy or be stored as glycogen. The limiting factor is the channels through which the carbs enter the cell. So only a certain amount of glucose can be let in at once. And then like an overcapacity nightclub, the rest of the glucose has to wait outside. That door is saturated. Fructose, however, enters the muscles through a different transporter. Fructose is like the coke dealing VIP who can get in through a cheeky side door. And when they've done scientific studies looking at oxidation rates of different carbs, combining glucose and fructose at the same time allows us to uptake around double the amount of total carbs in that same time frame. In this case, it helps me to get those carbs into the muscle cell and ready for my workout to be oxidized quickly. And as you can see, I'm smashing out a leg sesh. Once I'd got into this session, it had been around about an hour since I'd had those dates. So I snuck in some extra intra-workout carbs. Just glucose this time with pure sugar because I was only having about 70 grams. For clients and you guys, I'd recommend a carb drink rather than something solid as that's obviously going to digest better. Highly branched cyclic dextrin being the best option, which I'll link in the description. But as this is essentially a food challenge, I didn't want to drink loads of the calories and be accused of cheating by the YouTube police. Intra workout is a good opportunity to sneak some more carbs in, especially if you struggle to hit your target. And as a bonus, you get better performance, a great pump, and a lot of weird looks in the gym if you're munching your way through a packet of love hearts. Okay, we are back from the gym, and there's gonna be a lot going on at this meal, but I've got to shoot out to physiotherapy early this morning, so I'll explain one element of this meal, maybe two. So the whole rice side of things and what's gonna go on here, I'll probably explain later. What I'm gonna do as well is a shake and turn it into a little bit of a liquid meal. I'm not gonna overly do liquid meals today. In fact, this will be the only one, but I just wanna demonstrate how effective it can be. So if you're gonna have a protein shake, regardless, you might as well turn that into something that's also gonna contain carbs. Think about it, like if you're gonna have 30 grams of protein, but zero carbs and zero fat, you have to drink that two, 300 mils of liquid, why not add in some extra carbs to bump that up throughout the day? And you could even take this a step further and do things like carb powders, highly branched cyclic dextrin or maltodextrin, for example, add that into protein shakes, especially if you've got really, really high carb targets, 
or even if you are just having fluid throughout the day, if you're having squash, or if you're not English, like Mio flavored water for the US, um, adding in a carb powder to that, you won't taste it. But if you do 20, 30 grams when you have a drink, that could easily add up to over 100 extra grams of carbs throughout the day. So for this one, I'm going with two bananas. I'm also gonna add in 50 grams of honey, just to sweeten it up. I'm using the matcha whey isolate, so matcha, honey, and banana shake. And this actually totals, I've got 50 grams of carbs from the banana, 40 grams of carbs from the honey. So you've got almost 100 grams of carbs just in a shake that would have otherwise been zero carb. And then I'm also gonna do a little double espresso with this meal. So there was a 2008 study that had one group doing a double blind crossover study and they had um, on one occasion carbohydrates alone and then on another occasion carbohydrates with caffeine. Both times were post-exercise, they did cycling and when they had caffeine with their carbohydrates they had 66% better glycogen uptake. I mean that is a big difference and even if it doesn't make that much of a marked difference if you want a little bit of caffeine with a high carb meal it's probably gonna help the uptake of carbs somewhat. And if you want to be driving maximal carbs into your muscle cells, instead of letting it sit in the blood or potentially go and get stored as body fat, it's probably a good thing to do. This tastes so good as well. If you've ever been on the fence about the matcha protein, do it. To add in, I'm gonna do the rice as well. I get this from Muscle Food because it's super convenient and I'll explain what's going on here, like I said, in a voiceover or when I get home from physio. When the weather's like this, I always think firstly, just how grateful I am to have a job that is indoors. But secondly, just have a fucking roof over my head, man. Like going into winter and with this sort of weather on the regular, being on the streets has got to be rough. And you know what? You can look down on people who are on the streets and a lot of them have made poor decisions and continue to make poor decisions. But life can turn in an instant for any of us. A couple of bad decisions can put you in a really wrong place. And I think it helps to look at them with compassion and with empathy and not go out there and try to save the world and act like it's an easy problem to solve. But empathize with them, they're human as well and we're all just a few bad decisions away from that exact same situation. So it's probably been two, three kilos of increase per nice. exercise. Great. It's just a couple of weeks, isn't it? And it feels pretty linear as well. Like Sure. Great. That's spot on with how I want to be loading it. Right. Back in the game, home from physio, 20 minutes later and 40 quid lighter. I said earlier when I was making that rice that I was going to explain uh, what the kind of thought process was behind that. And it's one of the things that I tell clients to do, not with rice specifically or do exactly what I did, but it's telling them to slide carbs in under the radar, get extra carbs in, in ways that are not gonna go noticed by you. So for example, with that rice, I added in a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and then added ketchup. I know the first thing, everyone's gonna lose their shit because I added sugar. I'll talk about sugar later on in the video, but if you go to a restaurant, if you go to get like sushi, for example, sushi rice always has sugar, salt, and um, like rice wine vinegar and stuff added. If you get that 20 grams, say, extra carbs from that rice, you're gonna eat that rice anyway. Like with the smoothie that I was saying about earlier, when you add in honey, if you're gonna eat that rice, you might as well add an extra 10, 15, 20 grams of carbs, adding in things like high carb sauces. I was using ketchup there. You could also add like a sweet and sour sauce or with lunch you'll see that I'm gonna add another sauce to that meal. And all of these things add up throughout the course of the day. Even if it seems inconsequential by getting another you know, 15 grams of carbs in your rice or another 20 grams of carbs from ketchup, that stuff really does add up and build on one another throughout a day. If you've done that, 
in some form across your main four meals in the day, you can easily get another 100, 150 grams of carbs just from stuff that slides under the radar and is really easy to eat. It's gonna be way easier to get another 30 grams of carbs with rice by doing something like that, rather than adding in another 40 grams of dry weight of actual rice, because then you're gonna have more volume, your stomach's gonna be more full, and you're gonna to struggle to eat that amount of food. And if we have a little look in at the totals so far, we're already at 400 grams of carbs. 400, and it's like nine o'clock in the morning. 400 is the sort of amount that a lot of people will struggle just to hit in a day anyway, especially for a lot of my smaller female clients. But you can see that I've not eaten a lot of food volume to hit that 400. Just with these tips, tricks, and little tactics, you can make it really easy for yourself. But you know that I'm not gonna stop there. We're gonna go all the way to 1000 today and I've got plenty of other ideas up my sleeve. So let's get into it. <laughs> Quick ab check, whilst we've still got not a lot of food in yet. It's gonna be looking drastically different by the end of the day. Another tip that certainly isn't gonna come as a surprise to anyone, but does make a huge difference, is snacks throughout the day. In between each of your main meals, make sure you're also snacking. I'm going with two of these naked bars. I get these from Muscle Food. I've already absolutely demolished all the blueberry muffin ones. They're great. These are also great. These are apple Danish. It's 40 grams of carbs. 40 carbs in just two of these bars, and they're tiny. I'm also gonna do 60 grams of prunes. Prunes are good for also good digestion, keeping you regular. They contain a naturally occurring sugar alcohol called sorbitol, and I think they taste great. It's 40 grams of carbs in those naked bars, and then in 60 grams of these prunes, 32 grams of carbs, so you're talking another 75 grams of carbs just there, and that's like smaller than my hand in terms of volume. All right, you ready for this? So I've been keeping myself out of trouble and cracking on my work since that last snack, and I'm gonna demonstrate for lunch what I was saying earlier about adding in higher calorie sources. So even Sources like this, just 150 grams of this is 15 grams of carbs, and it's one of your five a day, that's a win-win. And again, if you're doing this across three, four meals in the day, it's gonna be really pushing you up towards that 100 grams extra carbs, just adding in things like sauces. So I'm gonna do this, along with some red lentil pasta that is somewhere, that's the bad boy. And then some tuna. This is the tuna that I get from Muscle Food. We're also gonna do a dessert, because you know like, when you're a kid, you're super full up at dinner and you're telling your parents you can't eat anymore. Then someone suggests dessert and all of a sudden you find this second stomach and you're like, right, now I can eat again. You can use that sort of thing to your advantage as well. It's easy to feel full at a meal, actually just because you're sick of that taste and you've just had too much of it. So if you have like a high carb total at one meal, you could split that between like sweet and savory, for example. Have something that's like salty, like this tuna pasta, then switch to something for dessert. And actually I've got another little trick up my sleeve for this dessert as well. Stay tuned for that one. I'll also do another double espresso with lunch because remember what I said earlier about it helping to increase carb uptake and it's a great excuse to have more coffee. Okay, whilst that pasta is boiling up, I'm gonna show you guys what I was saying about for dessert. So. Something that I tell clients when they are gaining and when they've got a lot of food to eat is don't just think about the types of foods that you have, like I've been speaking a lot about here. Also think about how you prepare those foods. So here I've literally just put in 90 grams of oats. These are the morn flake ones, again, that I get from muscle food. Now normally 90 grams of oats you'd have to cook up on a stove top or in the microwave, and maybe you'd add in twice as much water. So. Once that's boiled up, that's gonna end up a pretty damn big bowl of oats and a lot of volume. However, if we take that same 90 grams, maybe you add in some honey, and then you add in a high calorie mix-in, more dried fruit, some raisins. You can make something that is way more calorie dense than just a normal 90 gram bowl of oats 
for a lot less volume. So I'm gonna add in 80 grams of honey, I'm gonna add in 80 grams of raisins, and look how much less volume this would be than a full bowl of oatmeal if I was to mix it with a shit ton of water. So look at this, you've now got something that is kind of like a granola type consistency, almost, obviously a little bit softer, but a tiny amount of food volume. And this, with the honey, and with the oats and with the raisins, 54 carbs for the oats, 65 for the honey, so we're talking 120 there. And then raisins, another 63. So that there is almost 200 grams of carbs. And yet if you were just to do 90 grams of oats alone and add water, that would probably take up that entire bowl. So it's not only about the types of foods that you select, it's also about how you prepare them in order to make them more easily digestible, less voluminous and higher carb. Polish that off in about 20 seconds and mainly because I'm so looking forward to this. <laughs> yes, that was splendid. It's snack time, motherfuckers. Another work block down. I'm now gonna take just 10 minutes to clear my head and of course get some extra carbs in and you guessed it, it's gonna be dried fruit. This time I'm going with 50 grams of dates and then 75 grams of figs. And in case I haven't said it enough today, look how pathetic the volume is for how many carbs you get. It's great. So that's about 40 grams of carbs. And that is another 35. So you're talking about 80 grams of carbs just from that. Mmm, off the ceiling and in. Corner boys. I'm gonna eat these move around a little bit and then I'll catch you guys at dinner where I've got even more tips. Can you believe it? Even more! What's up my friends? We've just finished up work block. Emails are done for now. I've actually got some lovely, lovely feedback from clients this afternoon. It's a proper like, I f***ing love my job kind of work block. Now I'm gonna do some dinner and what I'm gonna have for dinner is something a little bit different to what you might be expecting on this type of video, and that is potato. Now, potato, there's a study that actually shows potato ranks the highest on the satiety index, i.e. for the kind of grammage amount, you're gonna get the most full from potato. So, seems very counterintuitive to include it in a very high calorie, high carb kind of food challenge type day, but I have my reasons. And it's a reason that I think is really important for everyone who's going into a gaining phase, for anyone who has to eat a lot of food. And actually it trumps everything else that I've said today in terms of tips, tricks, and little tactics here and there. This is probably the main one. And when you are starting any sort of diet really, the first thing to consider, and especially when you have a lot of food to eat, is which foods do you really enjoy? Like which foods do you just absolutely love and feel like you can never get enough of? Those are the main foods that you should probably prioritize. For me, I can eat a shit ton of white potato and honestly, like never really feel like there's enough. I can just keep eating it and put away a kilo of it easily. I'm gonna do close to that tonight, even after everything else that I've eaten so far. And I know it will go down just fine because it's something that I look forward to eating. It's something that I like a lot. And it's something that I could have in my diet every single day. In fact, I do have it in my diet every single day. So think about those types of foods for you. When I say, which foods do you absolutely love? There's probably some key ones that come to mind for you. And those should really form the basis of something that you eat quite frequently. Because if you're going to actually want it, if you're gonna actually like lust after that meal, you're then more likely to eat it. Whereas I've had like gaining phases and bulking periods before where I thought what you had to do was like chicken and rice, bro, six times a day, all the fucking time. And I hated it. Cold chicken and rice out of Tupperware with some token veggies here and there. And honestly, I didn't enjoy it. I never looked forward to the food. I struggled with every meal. And in my head, it was just like a shut up, work harder, keep going mentality, when actually you can, like I said earlier, have 
things that make it more enjoyable, things that make it um, something that isn't an absolute slog for you, things that actually set you up for success and let you do this in a way that isn't just a graft. So I'm gonna do 700 grams of these spuds. These are from Muscle Food, as is all of my food. I'm also gonna add in some ketchup with this. I've just boiled white potato with ketchup because remember what I've said twice already today, adding in sauces can really help to bump up those carbs. So I think I've got 16 grams of carbs worth just from ketchup. Again, do that three, four, five times throughout the day. You bump up your carbs really nicely. And this meal all together is gonna to total about 135 grams of carbs. I'm gonna do some uh, cod with it for some protein, just a lean protein option. There's one more thing as well, actually. That one more thing is that I spoke earlier about adding caffeine to certain meals. If you want the uptake of glucose into your muscles to be more efficient, to be better, something else that you also cannot neglect when you're eating a high carb diet is sodium. Don't be afraid of salt. The most important thing that you can do with salt, with sodium, is to keep your daily intake consistent. People associate it with negative fluctuations, that they are holding water or they look puffy, etc. If you keep it consistent, your body adapts to it and it will balance your levels in your body appropriately. Don't drop sodium, don't fully omit salt from your diet, and especially when you have high carbs, because do you remember earlier I was giving in that voiceover a like nightclub door analogy, right? For carbs to actually enter into the cell. Some glucose channels that allow carbs into your muscle cells are actually sodium dependent, right? They are kind of opened, if you will, like sodium is the key that opens up those channels for carbs to be delivered into the muscle cells. So salt is gonna to help to bring carbs into your muscle cells. And not only that, it's essential for muscle contractions and life. So don't drop it from your diet. Talking of salt, the one that I use is pink Himalayan sea salt. I get it from Muscle Food, shock, has to do with everything. This one, there's nothing particularly special about pink Himalayan sea salt. It doesn't have to be pink Himalayan sea salt, but it does have a nice balance of potassium with the sodium. So it's something that might balance your electrolytes better than having just pure sodium in normal sort of table salt. Um, I don't believe in any of the sort of crazy mystic properties that people claim pink Himalayan salt has. It's not about um, thinking this is gonna cure every possible disease known to man and make you a millionaire and add an inch to your penis. It's just nice. I think it tastes really good um, and I'd recommend it. Another one up. I know that is a lot of potato, but like I said earlier, I'll smash through that and I will do so happily. So if you've got foods like potato, is for me, you can just eat endless amounts of Philly boots. Right, it is 6.35. I'm thinking that's me probably done now. I just have to dive back in and do a little bit of work, but I think that's me wrapped up from this point. So what I'm gonna do is just head out and get my steps up a bit, have a little bit of a walk, let that dinner settle, because then when I come home, where are they at? Oh, best sweets in the world. I'm gonna polish off that bag, and this actually takes me to a very special carb target. I'm also, once I'm back, going to explain sugar, a little bit about why sugar is not the demon that you potentially might think it is, so hang tight for that. Let's go out and walk in the rain. What's the weather like, Ollie? It's raining sideways. Name that TV series. Beach on our doorstep. Yes. Okay, so sugar. I'm gonna have to pick my words carefully here because there seems to be like a very cult-like approach to sugar instead of just actually factually looking at the scientific data. And I will say that everything I'm about to say is just the data. It's not my opinion. I don't care whether sugar is good or bad. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It doesn't affect me as a human, right? It's just the scientific data. And what the scientific data currently says is that sugar is nowhere near the monster that the media makes out to be. They've literally done comparative studies where people intake 
the exact same amount of calories and the exact same amount of carbs. However, one will be a very high sugar group, other one, the other one will be a very low sugar group. And the health outcomes with those two groups, as well as all of the physique outcomes in terms of muscle mass and body fat, are exactly the same. There's no difference between the two. And what this tells us is that once we control for other variables, sugar really isn't a bad thing. Now, if we have total calories controlled for, for one, that keeps our total diet in check. If we then have macros controlled for, protein, carbs and fats, that's great too. The third thing that we need to account for is fiber. Fiber intake is important. And if all three of those things are taken care of properly, your sugar intake can probably fall pretty much anywhere, right, within moderation. And this is because by controlling for those three things, total calories, total macros, and fiber, we take care of all of the potential problems with sugar. So the first thing that people might say with sugar is that it makes you fat, right? That is a bad argument because the actual thing that's making you fat is overeating. It's over consuming calories. And the problem with sugar, like these randoms foamies, it's really tasty. And therefore it's really easy to overeat sugar, right? And what people do is they eat significant amount of sugar, which takes them over their total calorie amount that they should be eating each day. And that contributes to body fat gain. So if we're keeping total calories in check, that solves that problem. Now, number two, we said about keeping macros in check and keeping fiber in check third. That's really important because if you're gonna have a carb target to hit, again, you can't go over that number and overeat. And if you then have a fiber target to hit, you're gonna have to fill your day with mostly healthful foods. You're not gonna be able to hit 25 grams, 35 grams of fiber just by eating sweets all day, just by spooning table sugar into your mouth, right? You have to have a good amount of fruits, veggies, grains, soluble and insoluble fiber in order to hit that target. Once that's taken care of, if you add in some sweets, if you add in some sugars, it's not gonna make an ounce of difference. So the crux of it is, if you're talking to the general population, sure, reduce your sugar intake because that's probably going to bring down their total calorie intake. It may contribute to weight loss, which is fantastic for your health if you're overweight or obese. It's gonna help people to follow a more healthful diet, etc. However, if you're someone who already tracks calories, already tracks macros, and does most things to the letter, if you get an extra 50 grams of carbs in your day from sweets or from more potato, it's honestly not gonna make an ounce of difference. Like there's just no evidence we have to suggest that would make a difference to your physique, both in terms of muscle mass and body fat, or any health markers like triglycerides, like cholesterol. Ultimately, your body breaks everything down to glucose, right? Every carb type that you have gets broken down into glucose and either gets used for energy, uptake into the muscle glycogen, or processed through the liver, excreted, stored, whatever, right? All carbs go through those same processes. Your body doesn't suddenly go, oh shit, that's coming from randoms foamies, I better store that as body fat. If that was white potato, I would have had that as muscle mass. Your body doesn't work like that, right? Everything gets broken down to glucose. So don't feel ashamed by having some sugar. It is a really weird shaming culture around sugar at the moment, and especially for someone who's like into fitness, if I was to crack out like a bag of sweets or something, everyone around me would be like, I thought you were healthy. I'm like, I am. Thank you. 95% of my diet is extremely healthful and all of my blood markers are fantastic and I'm in good shape and I feel great. So yeah, I am healthy and eating a bag of randoms doesn't suddenly make me unhealthy and a terrible person. If you need to top up some of your carbs or if you want to top up some of your carbs with sugars, with things like sweets, go for it. Don't tell your dentist I said that. That's something that's obviously only negative when it comes to sugar. It's not great for your teeth, but go for it. If you've already taken care of calories, carbs, and fiber, some extra sugars from things like sweets aren't gonna be a problem. See where we're at. Not as bad as I was anticipating. If I let it out.
end of the night, we have ourselves some grand totals of 189 protein, 1,002 grams of carbs, and 21 grams of fat. And actually looking down through the day as well, we've got at least 13 servings of fruit and veg in there as well. So again, you don't have to do it in a way that is unhealthy. Sure you can add in certain little treats and certain things that you want throughout the day. Um, but yeah, that's 13 servings of fruit and veg and still a low volume approach. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next video.